Hello again. We are Chris Lee and Chase Robinson of Southeastern 16 here to preview Sanford's trip to the Swamp to play the Florida Gators. You can catch that at 6 p.m. Central on ESPN+. Plus. Don't see a line. But according to Jeff Sagarin's predictor model, adding in three points for home field, Florida should be about a 35-point favorite. Of course, we know these teams played a couple of years ago. It was a lot closer than that. Don't know if that has any relevance to it this week or not, but uh, Florida coming off a tough 41-17 loss to Miami. And regardless of opponent or point spreads or whatever, the Gators need to get some things right this week. Before we get to those things, Chase Robinson, tell folks who sponsors our content, please. Yeah, Bet Online is the world's most trusted betting platform and your number one source for everything football. Bet Online has every stat, every matchup, and even live odds and spreads to bet on during the games. If you think you know your stuff, you can get in on a $200,000 mega contest and pick five games against the spread every week for a chance at weekly prizes and a share of $200,000. When the game's over, you can go to the online casino, get in on a game of blackjack or poker or one of the over 150 slots games. Head over to the website today to get in on the action. Bet online. The game starts here. Well, both teams had rough weeks last week. We'll start with Sanford's offense on Florida's defense. The Bulldogs scored 29 points. Unfortunately, defense was not very good. They lost 38-29 to to West Georgia. Uh, what do we expect out of the Bulldogs? Yeah, so they have uh, finally got their, their quarterback. Uh, when Sanford made a run in the uh, FCS playoffs back in 2022, they made it through quarterfinals. They lost to the eventual uh, national champions, North Dakota State, and Quincy uh, Crintendon was the quarterback uh, that year, and he suffered an injury, uh, has not started a game since that quarterfinal game in 22, but he was back on Saturday, and uh, he went 24 of 41, uh, two touchdowns. He did have an interception. Uh, Crindendon, uh also had a game high uh, rushing of 95 yards and two touchdowns on his 19 carries. So he's a dual threat guy, uh, can run, has got a good arm. Uh, and then Micah Kelly also uh, is, a, is a running back. He had 40 yards on 10 attempts. Um, Brendan Jenkins is there is one of their go-to receivers. Uh, he had uh, four catches, 81 yards. Uh, Ian Cousin had uh, 77 yards on uh, five passes. Um, but 11 different Sanford Bulldogs had receptions on Saturday night. So they've got a lot of depth at uh, wide receiver that they will uh, will shoot, go out there. But uh, Quincy Crendendon, again, he's been out. He's a good quarterback. And uh, he was a big part of how they went so deep in the FCS playoffs a couple of years ago. Uh, his injury hurt them last year, but he's back. And, you know, it may take a, a little time for him to get comfortable, but um, it'll be interesting to see what the uh, the Florida defense can do with so much depth. Again, at wide receiver, a lot of guys are going to be catching the football. Yeah, I think the last thing you want when you're struggling defense is to face a dual threat quarterback who who passed for 302 the week before and, and ran for 95 and, and four touchdowns total. But that's the lot. Florida's got it. Frankly, will be the easiest game the rest of the season. That defense last week, a major disappointment. Cam Ward absolutely carved Florida up. They gave up 530 yards, give or take a couple. We talked about the pass rush. Needed to be more of a factor this year. Didn't see an obvious guy there for them, which probably should have been something, Chase, we paid a little bit more heed to coming into the Miami game. That's now out there for everybody. This needs to be a get-well game for Florida's defense. Um, you do have some good players there, Jason Marshall, but I'm, I'm really interested to see maybe how that defensive line rotates and what that looks like because they need help starting there. Yeah, this needs to be a big game uh, for them. And, uh, and yeah, we've talked about in the preseason just what uh, what they can do. Uh, and, and, yeah, I think this game is big for them. It is probably the easiest game on the rest of the schedule. And so they need to take advantage of that. And you remember a couple of years ago, um, Sanford and Florida played. It was towards the end of Dan Mullen's time at Florida. And uh, Sanford came really close to beating them in the swamp. Yeah. And uh, that was a, a late season matchup instead of the early season. But um, this, uh, this should be interesting. Uh, to see, but yes, yeah, some definitely some improvements need to be made uh, defensively for Florida. 
Well, same could be said of Sanford, which gave up 465 yards last week. I mean, if, if West Georgia can do that, what can DJ Lagway, Montrell Johnson, and those guys do? Right. That's uh that, that's that's a, a big point there. And and um it's it's gonna be hard for for Sanford to stop DJ Lagway. Uh, I think, you know, I'm interested to see how he does starting and and uh and and what the the offense for Florida looks like coming off of uh, such a hard performance last week, but um, you know, Sanford's really trying to rebuild uh, the defense. Uh, Noah Martin's kind of their best tackler. Uh, he had 11 uh, tackles last week. Um, Jaden Mosley, C.J. Douglas, Edwin Deerman, those are kind of the, the main guys on defense for, um, for Sanford. But, yeah, they gave up uh, 38 points to West Georgia in their um, FBS debut, and so – um, uh, it, uh, it'll, it'll be interesting to see, uh, what, uh, what happens there with, uh, with Sanford, uh, but Florida has got to make some changes. They've got to, um, they've got to change some things up and, uh, I'm, I'm interested to see with DJ Lagway leading the way, uh, what exactly they, uh, what exactly they do, what changes are made. If there is any changes made, uh, to the game plan offensively. I'm really intrigued by that, Chris. Yeah, Mertz, I think most people watching know, is going to be out for this game with injuries. So Lagway, of course, one of the top recruits in the country. Uh, a lot of people are going to be dying to see him play one way or the other. I mean, this is this is the point of the season. I've been asked on a couple of shows, hey, is this the week that, that Florida maybe just turns it over to him for good? That's it, hard to answer. But, it, look, the, the – I guess the backdrop of all this is Billy Napier's job security. Now, I think they're going to owe him about $60 million to go away. But uh, the drumbeat of we need a new coach and Gainesville had started before the season. And, uh, you know, th this should be a get-right game for Florida. ESPN has got Sanford with about a percent and a half chance of pulling the upset. But I think, you know, Florida just needs to go out and take care of business. And I, I am very interested to see what it looks like with D DJ Lagway at the controls. They do need to go out and take care of business, and because uh, again, you you got Sanford this week, Texas A and M the following week, and then at Mississippi State to round out September. So you you need this game. You really need this game if you're Florida. Uh, take care of business here, and and then get back on track and get ready for the rest of the way. Well, we'll talk about it probably Saturday night on our live stream. Best way to get that: hit that subscribe button. That's free. Enable your notifications. That is also free. You will be notified when we go live. Also, tell a friend about the channel. Hit the thumbs up button on the video. That helps our analytics. And we are here year-round for football, baseball, basketball content. We reach millions of people every year. Caroline.Smith at Southeastern14.com. If you are interested in reaching a large SEC audience, that's where you go. All right. For Chase Robinson, I'm Chris Lee. We are Southeastern16 presented by Bet Online.